maybe almost six years ago now. As I was at a corporate job, I was inputting the same 12 codes every single day. It was really horribly monotonous. <laughs> it was, yeah, it just wasn't my dream by any stretch of the imagination. I quit drinking. I had my son and I found coaching and all three of those things coming together at once really gave me the motivation to finally do something about it and to finally make some moves. I just felt like I want him to be proud of me. And I want, when I tell him he can go after his dreams, when I tell him he can do anything he wants to do, I want to mean that. And I'm not going to feel very genuine if I'm inputting 12 codes every day when I say that. I had tried it and I was like, I, I did good enough. I did well enough, but I hadn't really put my like best foot forward. And when I tried it next time, what I did is I, and I'm still going, my business is going on. I'm happy about that. <laughs> but what I did radically different this time is I committed to a time frame. I'm like, I'm going to give it a year and I'm going to go all in and I'm going to do everything I can possibly do to make this work. Pick a time frame, pick six months, pick a year and a half, whatever you can do, whatever you can manage, and really go all in and give it your best effort. Ever since, like my whole life, words have had a really special place in my heart. I had a kind of like a messy childhood with just like my parents had a really dramatic divorce. So I started journaling when I was young and it really helped me make sense of the world around me. It really took what felt very fragmented and chaotic and just made it into this, just something I could process and go through and make sense of. And that it made all the difference for me, really. The heart, compassion, the empathy, the vulnerability, like that all happens when you take that fear of rejection, take that fear of everyone not liking you, take that people pleasing out of the equation. Definitely stop watering down the great messages you start with. What I would say is definitely focus on what you can control and then detach from the outcomes and focus on putting your best foot forward. Your ideal client won't engage with it because they don't want the people to, to realize that they need your services and to start spamming them to death because that's exactly what happens. If I mentioned YouTube on LinkedIn, I get 150 people in my inbox the next day saying, I can sort out your SEO for your YouTube channel if you want. Or I can. It's a one little shift that can make such a big difference. And I just see people not doing it or neglecting it. Make sure you're tracking what is resonating with your audience. And then you can do more of that.